Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a relatively recent analysis and discovery of a star system that may have actually experienced an unusual planetary collision. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What Matt. So this system right here, uh, represented in Space Engine, is known as Kepler-107. This is uh, a system we've actually discovered quite a while ago that has four planetary objects. And, um, well, actually all four are relatively inhospitable to life because they're probably super hot. This star that you see in the background is actually very similar to our own Sun. But if you look at the distances where these planets are located, they are super close to the star. For this reason, basically all four of them are sort of more or less molten worlds filled with a lot of hot, hot, hot misery, if you are a human being that is. Uh, and as you can see, they're also kind of evaporating and creating some unusual and mysterious effects, especially this one right here. It almost looks like this is probably going to be the thumbnail for this video. But anyway, so um, in this video, what I wanted to talk about is this really awesome new analysis uh, coming out of Italy and actually a very large team of uh, international researchers and the paper for this you can find in the description below that talks about how this particular system may have actually been the first system we've ever discovered that um, had a relatively large planetary collision. Now, why is this interesting and why is it important? Well, for one, we know that planetary collisions, even though they did happen in our own solar system, are exceptionally rare. Uh, we are almost certain that Earth received a collision from an, a planetary object similar to Mercury um, that basically created the Moon. This is how the uh, creation of the Moon was explained years ago. And uh, we are pretty sure that several other planets in our solar system, if not all of the planets, at some point received a collision. Like for example, Uranus is sort of spinning on its side because of a very large planetary collision. So they do happen, but they're exceptionally rare. And seeing one in another star system would also be kind of rare. So, okay, before we start, we haven't really seen two planets colliding. That's not what we're talking about here. But what we have seen are the effects of a potential collision. And the way that these effects are described are actually relatively brilliant. So to start, let me actually show you what the system of Kepler-107 looks like in a universe sandbox. So there are these four planets, they're all relatively close to the star, and they're all basically, um, well, super hot, as I mentioned before. Uh, but the interesting thing about this particular star system is that despite these two planets, 107d and 107e being relatively terrestrial, we don't yet know much about them. But the study that I uh, mentioned talks about these two objects, 107b and 107c. And the reason we're talking about these two planets is because of their unusual densities. So first of all, this system is really far away, so what we're seeing here might still be interpreted differently in years to come when we have a better telescope. It's about 1700 light years away from us, which is really, really, really far. But um, we're detecting the actual sizes of these planets relatively accurately, because they're pretty close to their star and they passed in front of the star, so we know both their size and also their mass. So we know that this object here, Kepler-107b, um, is about 150% uh, the size of our planet Earth. In other words, it's about 150% larger. And at the same time, it's about three and a half mass of Earth. So its density overall is actually relatively similar to the density of Earth. It's about 5.3 grams per centimeter cube. Maybe a little bit closer to Mercury than Earth, actually. So this is potentially a terrestrial world. But then, on the other hand, we have this second object, which is 107c, that is also around the same size as planet B. It's about 150% um, larger than our planet Earth, but its mass is about nine times more massive than planet Earth. In other words, this object is extremely, extremely dense. It's about 12.6 grams per centimeter cube of density, 
which is practically two and a half times more dense than planet Earth. This is one of the densest planets uh, we could ever imagine, and the only way to explain this density is basically if this was almost entirely made out of uh, metal. So if this wasn't really water, wasn't really silicates, but for the most part was about 70% iron. So if this planet has a huge iron core, in that case we can definitely explain the density. But to acquire such an unusual iron core, it needs to, something catastrophic has to happen to this planet. It can just suddenly lose all of its mantle, all of its rocky stuff, and become so metallic. Because the other planets in this star system are not like that at all. So something unusual may have happened to it. And the best explanation for this is that, well, it's very likely that this planet received an extremely large collision that basically sends a lot of the rocky stuff flying out of the planetary system, and what was left behind was a very dense iron core. Now we think that maybe something similar actually did happen to Mercury as well, because Mercury does have a proportionally large iron core compared to the rest of the planet. And uh, it's very possible that this actually does happen quite a lot in other star systems. But this is the first time ever we were able to identify a planet with a very, very dense composition that cannot really be explained otherwise because the other planets, specifically planet B that's much closer to the sun, don't seem to have. Because technically speaking, this object should also have a relatively high density. They're very close to each other, so they were formed from the same material. So there's no reason for these objects to have such a tremendously different density. In our solar system, all terrestrial planets, specifically Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars that I place right here, have a relatively similar density. It's anywhere between the smallest for Mars would be just under 4 grams per centimeter cube, and the largest is Earth, which is just over 5.5 grams per centimeter cube. And that's because they were also formed from relatively similar material in the same region. So that is why the scientists behind this paper are practically convinced that the only explanation for the density of Kepler 107c is that it received a large collision that stripped it of basically everything but the iron core. So it's an extremely large metallic planet. Now the paper itself also provides a few more details on the actual collision and how it may have progressed and how this planet um, eventually acquired all of its metallic material and how all of the other stuff probably flew away. But for the most part, I think I gave you a pretty good idea of what happened in this particular system. Although, unfortunately, because of the distances involved here, um, doing a follow-up study and obviously even considering visiting this one day is sort of, uh, for now at least, out of the question. It's just a little bit too far. It also doesn't seem to have any uh, potentially habitable planets. All of these planets are much too hot for our existence. And so, for this reason, this is more of a scientific interest type of a star system than it is a potential new home for the human beings. On that note though, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I really wanted to kind of come back here and admire this beautiful red planet one more time. But anyway, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about our universe from this video. And if you've enjoyed this video and if you learned um, and also want to learn a little bit more, don't forget that subscribing does help this channel grow. And also supporting this channel on Patreon does help me quite a lot in making better videos and basically getting better equipment. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support over the years. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.